my uh, app shut down by accident, so picking up where I left off. The Riverdance asshole. I just wanted to get out of there, away from all those people. I took a couple of steps and almost fell down. Horkman grabbed me. Fuck you, I reiterated. But I don't think he heard me, because all of a sudden there was a big black helicopter over us. Very low. So loud it drowned out the noise of the banana mob. I looked up and saw some guys in the doorway pointing at Horkman and me. Ten seconds later, they were coming down on ropes, four of them, right on top of us. Two grabbed Horkman, two grabbed me. Horkman yelled, what are you doing? Who are you? But they didn't answer. Twenty seconds later, we were being hauled up into the chopper, which was already heading out to sea. The last I saw of Africa was a couple thousand skinny people looking up at us, waving bananas, which I guess was their way of saying thanks. Chapter 42 The NBC Nightly News Brian Williams Good evening. They're calling it the Miracle of the Bananas. It's an amazing story from famine-stricken Africa. A story of compelling human drama and international intrigue with an almost unbelievable twist. That twist involves the two most wanted men in the world, Philip Horkman and Jeffrey Peckerman. The mysterious, now legendary, Fantasma Silanoche, who allegedly masterminded the recent terrorist attacks in New York City before spearheading the lightning strike overthrow of the Cuban regime. After that, Horkman and Peckerman seemed to vanish from the face of the earth. Today, they suddenly resurfaced in, of all places, Somalia, where in one astonishing stroke, they struck a major blow against three scourges that have plagued the nation for years. Hunger, corruption, and international piracy. For more on these developments, we go to NBC News African correspondent Andrew Sable in Somalia. Sable. Brian, the story began early today aboard the cargo ship Sonia, which you see grounded behind me on the Somali coast. The Sonia was bound for Lebanon, carrying a massive shipment of bananas, when it was hijacked off the African coast by one of Somalia's most feared and brutal pirates, a man named Ali. Details on what happened next are sketchy, but it appears that Horkman and Peckerman were aboard the Sonia, posing as crewmen having apparently boarded in Cuba. Somehow they were able to turn the tables on the pirates, hijacking the ship and killing the pirate leader, Ali. It appears that Horkman and Peckerman then deliberately steered the ship onto the coast, grounding it in such a way as to spill literally millions of bananas onto the shore less than two miles from a camp housing thousands of starving famine refugees. When word of the spill reached the camp, the refugees, mostly women and children, started walking toward the ship, only to find their path blocked by local militants who, for months, have been preventing international aid from reaching the refugees. Somehow, Horkman and Peckerman, who, according to the refugee eyewitnesses I spoke to, were armed only with bananas, were able to defeat the militants and open the path to the spill. What followed, as you can see in this video, was a dramatic and heartwarming scene as thousands of women and children, many on the brink of starving to death, were able, for the first time in weeks, to eat and to hope. Brian, I've covered a lot of stories in my day, but I don't think I've ever covered one as moving as this. Williams, incredible. And what happened to Horkman and Peckerman? Sable, Brian, They have once again vanished. Witnesses say that only moments after defeating the militants, the two men were whisked away in a black helicopter. Evidently, they had this operation planned right down to the second. Williams, does anybody know where the helicopter came from or where it went? Sable, not a clue, Brian. The Fantasmas de la Noche, the ghosts of the night, are truly living up to their name. Williams, indeed they are, and thank you, Andrew. Meanwhile, video of the miracle of the bananas quickly spread around the world, and the response has been overwhelming. In the words of the Secretary General of the United Nations, if two men acting alone can do so much for so many people in such desperate need, 
How can we, the nations of the world, stand by and do nothing? The UN Security Council is meeting in emergency session and is expected to approve massive new emergency aid to Somalia with UN troops to ensure its delivery. The public response has also been extraordinary as millions of ordinary citizens in America and abroad have flooded relief agencies with donations and offers of help. As for Philip Horkman and Jeffrey Peckerman, in the eyes of millions around the globe, they are now seen as heroes, almost superheroes, a fact that has put the U.S. government in an awkward position. For more on that story, we go to NBC Washington correspondent Jeffrey Berkowitz. Berkowitz. <clears throat> Brian. Officially, Horkman and Peckerman are still tied for the title of America's public enemy number one, wanted by the feds for their alleged role in the New York attacks. But behind the scenes, according to my sources, the administration is deeply conflicted about the mystery duo. Not only have Horkman and Peckerman become hugely popular, they've achieved this popularity for stunning achievements in Cuba and Somalia that are exactly in line with US with official US policies. <clears throat> As one White House source told me, we don't know what game these guys are playing, but whatever it is, they're playing it brilliantly. I'm told that the president himself wants to contact the two men, but <clears throat> sources tell me that nobody in the entire American intelligence community has any idea how to find them. The million dollar question now is, will they strike again? And if so, where? Williams. Already there have been reported sightings of Horkman and Peckerman in London, Moscow, Paris, Rome, Cairo, Mexico City, Buenos Aires, New Delhi, several upscale restaurants in Los Angeles and Graceland. Although none of those reports turned out to be accurate, one thing is certain. Wherever these two men appear next, the eyes of the entire world will be on them.